district core advisory group we request mr makran lele to kindly address thank you good afternoon friends uh, welcome you all to this uh, webinar on the gst at the outset let me compliment each one of you for successfully completing the one year of the G launching of gst it's indeed a great and unique uh, tax reform adopted by uh, india in last one year we have also started uh, receiving the benefits uh, out of this uh, particular reform though there are certain uh, teething troubles in the implementation but gradually they are getting reduced and uh, the cost of uh, transaction is also getting reduced now and the consumers are uh, now st really started getting the benefits there is lot of uh, ease of doing business uh, coming up in the tax calculations and filing the returns and that is uh, very very beneficial for uh, the entire uh, indian community uh, it this particular initiative has also been appreciated internationally uh, and many other countries uh, like dubai has also recently uh, introduced the gst tax reforms in their uh, structure uh, at icsi uh, since inception for last one year we have been taking lot of uh, initiatives in this regard we have been uh, strengthening uh, the hands of our members so that they can be uh, functioning as a very good uh, effective gst consultants and can 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 open up the new areas of their practice uh, from that perspective uh the gst newsletter has already been introduced uh, and it is reaching to every member then gst educational series also we have launched where uh, about 14 editions uh, we have already launched and every day you are getting uh, new inputs uh, on the gst inclusion of the gst in the syllabus this is one of the important step uh, icsi has taken to nurture uh, our future professionals both at the executive and professional level this gst uh, curriculum has been introduced and that is definitely going to uh, help the entire uh, future fraternity of the company secretaries gst point is also one of the unique initiative of icsi where we are uh, helping our members to solve various uh, queries on the gst icsi in addition to this is also conducting various programs uh, and at various levels we have been propagating and we have been educating our members as to uh, how uh, you could prepare yourself for the gst as a consumer as a consultant or as a businessman uh, th this particular webinar is also one of the effort uh, towards uh, in this particular direction and uh, today we have uh, one of the eminent faculty with us uh, and i think uh, i should not mention him uh, or i should not uh, introduce him officially because he is a very well known faculty all over india so uh, i wish uh, good luck for uh, this interaction and looking forward to it thank you very much madam aap thank you very much sir now we'll request mr p k mittal to kindly address <coughs> good evening friends uh, at the outset i convey my sincere gratitude to the icsi for giving me an opportunity of interacting on a very very important topic of the input tax credit before i really deal with the input tax credit let me uh, go to the history of itc earlier in the excel excise regime about uh, 15 years back it used to be known as modvet rule 57a thereafter the name was changed to senvet and in the central uh, uh, in the gst regime it is known as the itc input tax credit now the first of all we must know what exactly the input tax credit mean what are the various taxes which are paid by any ssc which can be taken the benefit of for the purpose of paying the gst 
on their fi either final product or on the only final services which are subject matter of GST. <coughs> Let us first deal with uh, the input. Input uh, has been defined in section 2, subsection 62 of the CGST Act. Input, uh, you know, in simple word, if I say so, uh, means uh, the the input means the goods. And uh, if I if I again say, goods means all kind of movable property. In other words, although again movable property has not been defined, it has been defined in an indirect manner, so to say what is not immovable is a movable so immovable if i say so what is what is what is immovable immovable is something permanently fastened to the earth or attached to the earth is immovable if something is not permanently fastened to the earth or attached to the earth is a movable so whatever first of all let us understand no GST is payable on immovable, immovable, uh, immovable property. GST is only payable on the on the movable property or a or in other words a goods. So, whatever tax has been paid for the purpose of purchase of the movable property or goods, the benefit can be derived in terms of ITC. Now, for example, let me try to illustrate by way of simple example. Let us take the case of this pen. Now, if uh, a person is a manufacturer of this pen, for manufacture of this pen, what all he is going to buy is this, this cover he is going to buy, the, uh, this, uh, this clip he is going to buy this refill inside is going to buy and the color is going to buy and there are and for example for the purpose of shining some treatment is required to be given. Now let me first deal with the regime prior to GST regime. In GST regime if the cost of this pen was say 10 and the on various input or let, let me put it like this for example the 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 the, the various input which i purchase upon payment of the excise duty i am talking about the uh, the period prior to gst if i am paying excise duty on all the input for manufacture of this pen say rupee 1 so 10 rupees is the cost of manufacture of the pen and if the excise duty was rupees 10 uh, excise duty was 10% it comes to rupees 1 so 10 plus 1 it comes to rupees 11 <coughs> thereafter say again if the if the if the vat is levable as again a 10% uh, uh, so, while calculating the VAT, we will have to calculate the VAT on 10 plus 1 that is 11 and the VAT is payable. So, 1 rupee and 10 pesa, the cost was rupees, now cost become to 12 rupees and 10 pesa. Now, what is the difference between, and what is the difference between the earlier regime and now in the, uh, this uh, uh, GST regime? In earlier regime, uh, sorry, in, in earlier regime, when the manufacturer sells this pen to uh, to the wholesale dealer and charges the uh, number one, the excise duty and the VAT, and thereafter when the manufacturer sell to the dealer, then he is not entitled to take the benefit of the excise duty which is already paid. What he was not earlier entitled to was to take the benefit of a VAT which he has paid. But in this in the GST regime, 
the when the manufacturer is selling this pen to a dealer to the wholesale dealer and again the cost is rupees the cost of manufacturing rupees 10 only and the GST is say assuming 18 percent. The GST the, the total cost the total cost comes to 1 rupee and uh, you can say 1 rupees and 80 pesa. So, total cost comes to rupees uh, how much uh, this comes to uh, 11 rupees and 80 pesa. In the earlier regime how much we how much uh, the cost it worked out to be 12 rupees and 10 pesa you come here no problem 10 rupees and 12 pesa. Now, a most important distinction we will have to see is what? In the current regime, if the, if the, if the wholesale dealer has paid a tax of is 1 and 80 paisa and when he is selling the product say at rupees uh, 15 for a minute and he is paying a tax of say 18 percent. How much tax works up and uh, how much tax works out to rupees? Um, uh, this uh, this uh, it comes out to 185.15 hmm. 15 and 18 percent. Eight rupees How much? 140. Huh? So, uh, 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 I think uh, let me see 150 is this. Anyhow, um, the whatever the tax works out to be in that while paying the tax, whatever the tax he has paid to the manufacturer that tax can be taken the benefit of. Now, in the earlier regime, in the earlier regime, if the manufacturer has to pay the tax that is excise duty, he could take the benefit and while paying the excise duty, the benefit he could take was whatever excise duty he has paid for purchase of the raw material only that benefit he could have taken. For the purpose of payment of excise duty, if he has paid the VAT, the benefit of VAT could not have been taken for the purpose of payment of excise duty. But in the GST regime, now there is only one tax, what jumps time we, we say one tax one nation, meaning thereby all the taxes all the taxes have now merged into one tax. If I say in simple word uh, earlier, there used to be number of uh, taxes like for example, central excise duty like uh, CVD, SAD, the service tax, the surcharge and as far as uh, the state taxes are concerned, uh, the state VAT, the central sale tax, the purchase tax, the entry treatment tax, the entry tax and uh, then uh, taxes on lottery betting so on so on so on so on so on. So, all the taxes which were levied by the state, all the taxes which are levied by the center have now merged into one tax that is called the GST. So, whatever GST we have paid for purchase of either raw material for manufacture of this pen and whatever services we have whatever services we have availed that is called input service and we have paid GST. So, on both the things the, in, the GST paid on input, GST paid on services, whatever GST we have paid both on input and on services we can take the benefit. For example, in this let us take the case of this pen itself. As I say assuming we have paid GST of rupees 1 on purchase of various raw material. Similarly, assuming I have paid a, a, a GST on various services like rupees 50 paisa. So, it comes to 1 rupee and 50 paisa 
and when i when when i manufacture and when when i sell it to the to the wholesale dealer and if i if i have to pay the tax of rupee gst of rupees 2 so i don't have to pay cash of rupees 2 for the purpose of paying rupees 2 as a cash the rupees 1.50 which comprise of rupee 1 as a tax paid on input and 50 paisa gst paid on services that i can take the benefit so net effect is when i sell a pen to a wholesale dealer by and and i pay tax of rupees 2 i have to pay cash of only rupees 50 paisa because One rupee and fifty paisa is a tax which has already accrued to me both in terms of purchase of input and fifty paisa when I have availed the taxable services, which was not the regime, which was not the case earlier. The uh, the in the credit of the VAT cannot be utilized for the purpose of payment of excise duty. Similarly, credit of excise duty. could not have been utilized for the purpose of payment of the vat so this is the most uh, very very important advantage which we have in the gst regime <clears throat> now question arises in the mind that uh, what are the input on which i i can take the credit for that purpose we have a landmark judgment of the calcutta high court in the case of single alloys the judgment of uh, the calcutta high court in the case of single alloys says that it is not for the department to say what are the various input which are only required for the for the purpose of manufacture of this pen or even for the manufacture of this watch it is for the manufacturer to decide what are the various input which are required for the purpose of manufacture of this watch for example if this watch is manufactured now watch require shining now if for the purpose of giving a shine to this watch if i am buying a chemical and this this stripe this is stripe is treated by a chemical to give a star shining department cannot tell me that why you have used this chemical for the purpose of giving shine or department cannot tell me why you have purchased the uh, chemical of a so and so grade and, and why you have not purchased the chemical of lower grade it is none of the business of department department is nobody to question me that whether any chemical is required whether any process is required to be followed or not whether <clears throat> this should be used or not this should not be used or not whether the any 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 raw material of particular grade is to be used or not this is none of the business of the department the calcutta high court clearly says that the the manufacturer is a master manufacturer has to decide what inputs are required what inputs are not required similarly as for the various services are concerned it is for the um, manufacturer to decide what services what services to be availed for example if uh, there is a uh, a company is engaged in the in, in the very 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 uh, i will say poisonous chemical now the, uh, the there is a gas which which comes out during the manufacturing process and to to reduce the pollution if there there is required to be tree plantation there is required to be various pollution control equipment is required to be installed can the department say tomorrow that why are you installing the uh, this why are you uh, having lot of greenery why are you spending money on greenery why are you why you have installed the pollution control equipment the answer is no department cannot tell me as such otherwise the uh, there is a lot of consciousness for the purpose of reducing the pollution and also we have pollution laws which clearly says that the pollution is required to maintain at a particular level so whatever amount has been spent either for purchase of capital capital equipment or for the purchase of the input 
or the input services. Input services in the sense that if I engage a contractor and that contractor is maintaining lot of greenery or the contractor is, is, uh, is uh, providing services for the purpose of tree plantation so that the, the pollution is reduced to a great extent. Now, when the contractor the, who is engaged in tree plantation, he raises a bill and he raises the amount, obviously he raises the amount of GST in his bill. The point here is, can I take the input tax credit of the GST paid um, uh, on the bill which has been raised by the contractor who is just simply who is doing nothing, who is not involved in any manner in the manufacture of the chemical or manufacture of this watch or manufacture of this pen, but is only providing is only providing the services of a tree plantation. The answer is yes, whatever service tax has, whatever the GST has been paid on the bill which has been raised by the by the contractor for the purpose of tree plantation a person is entitled to take the credit. <clears throat> the, the question then here arises, next question which arises whether the whatever the tax I have paid either on acquisition of input or for purchase of plant and machinery or for acquiring the input services. Can I take the benefit of that even with respect to when I manufacture the exempt goods? For example, I have a factory, I have a factory where there is a, there's a, there's a floor mill, the wheat is purchased and the atta is prepared, atta is manufactured, which is not a branded atta. Side by side we have a, another unit where maida is manufactured and out of maida eatable articles are being produced. Now, the question arises there are very, very many inputs which are commonly used both for manufacture of atta and for manufacture of the various eatable item produced out of maida. Now, atta is, is exempt, whereas the uh, eatable items, jise hum kai bar hindi mein kachri bolte hain. if I am producing kachri, or wafers for example for the uh, and these are all the wafer is or kachri is a taxable item. The question is whether all the all the tax which I have paid for, uh, even known for uh, say man, for this uh, um, uh, these uh, various item can I take the can I take the benefit of the entire tax the answer is no. We will have to take the proportionate the benefit is the proportionate benefit has required to be because the, the, the basic fundamental principle is that if your final product is exempt, you cannot take the benefit of the input tax credit. Proportionate credit is permissible. The ITC is permitted only when the supply is taxable. Supply could be of services, supply could be of goods. Mm. If something is non taxable or something is exempt, in both the event, whatever tax you have paid, you cannot take the benefit of those tax. You cannot take the credit of the tax paid either on capital goods or on input or on services. When there is a production of both, exempt goods, taxable goods, non-taxable goods and taxable goods. So, it the, the benefit has to be taken proportionately. <clears throat> then we have uh, one more type of uh, the, the, uh, the, the goods or services which we call zero rate. Let me tell you even in the central excise regime, 
even this zero rate is also rate of taxation. Strictly speaking, no tax is paid, but it is called a zero rate. Zero rate is also in, in law, even earlier law and even current law. If you look at the provision of section 16 of the IGST Act, which speaks of the zero rate. Zero rate is, is levied when there is either export of goods or there is a supply of goods or services to the SEZ unit or to the SEZ developers. In both the event, in both the event, uh, whenever they are, whenever the SEZ unit or SEZ developer is selling the goods, then it is the, it is the, it is a zero rate. And uh, whatever the input, whatever the input they, they, they are, um, uh, the, whatever the input they have, uh, what uh, tax they have paid on input, input services or the capital goods, they can take the benefit and as I said, the on finished goods or services, if it is a zero rate, then the credit which you have taken in respect of the acquisition of capital goods or the input or input services, you can seek the refund from the department. And you must have seen uh, the department has been very, very liberal now uh, in granting the refund, in, especially in case of exports. So, <clears throat> uh, the um, in case of uh, exports and in case of uh, supplies to the um, SEZ developer or SEZ unit, no tax is required to be paid as provided under section 16 of the IGST Act. Now the, uh, the the person who can take the, who, the person who is eligible to take the ITC, uh, it is a fundamental principle that a person who wants to take the ITC, he must get himself registered. If somebody is not registered at all, he is not he, 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 he has not sought an registration uh, from the uh, from the GST authority, uh, then he is debarred from taking the benefit of ITC. The fund, first and fundamental requirement is that this person should be registered uh, with, the, with the GST authority. And the second condition is either he should be supplying the goods or services which are taxable or the goods or services which are of zero rate. Zero rate as already have said, zero rate applies only in case of exports and supplies made to SEZ developer or SEZ unit. And repeating once again, repeating once again, the ITC will not be will not be available if the final product is either exempt or final product is either uh, either um, non-taxable at all. <clears throat> One more thing we'll have to keep in the mind is, <clears throat> uh, as I said that uh, uh, if somebody is not registered, he can't take the benefit of uh, ITC. Similarly, if the person is under the composition scheme, that is section 10, composition scheme, when he is uh, entitled to pay a tax on a very, very nominal uh, rate of tax of 1%. Then for buying, for buying the various uh, raw material or um, for um, various uh, input services, whatever tax he may have paid, he can't take the benefit of the credit of the taxes paid because ultimately what he is doing is he is paying a tax only at 1%. And this, uh, this uh, combustion scheme is available only to the trader or a manufacturer is not available to the uh, person who renders services. <clears throat> now the, as I say that uh, whenever you buy any goods, you will find the invoices there are two element of tax. If it is an intrastate purchase, one is the CGST and the SGST. If you buy intrastate, uh, intrastate, then it is uh, then again two element. 
the what is the how we can take the benefit of this as for the cgst is concerned when we have to uh, whatever credit we have taken and when we have to pay the cgst first whatever credit of cgst is available to me i will utilize for the purpose of payment of cgst and anything left over could be used for the purpose of payment of igst similarly sgst that is state tax as far as, as far as state tax are concerned whatever credit in respect arising out of the arising out of the state transactions intra state transactions this could be utilized for the purpose of payment of the sgst and then later on if something is left over it could be used for the purpose of payment of igst let me clarify let me clarify that the amount of sgst could not be cannot be and could not be utilized for the purpose of payment of cgst tax sgst repeating once again could be utilized for the purpose of payment of sgst and igst similarly the cgst could be utilized for the purpose of payment of cgst and the igst and not the vice versa uh, cgst could not be utilized for the purpose of payment of sgst sgst could not be utilized for the purpose of payment of cgst and the whatever igst i have paid whatever igst i have paid that could be utilized first for the purpose of payment of igst then cgst and then sgst igst could be utilized for all the three whereas cgst and sgst could not be utilized for all the three so this is advantage of igst repeating once again igst could be utilized for the purpose of payment first the igst any left over cgst any left over then sgst so this is the scheme of uh, our uh, input tax uh, input tax credit the now i have already explained uh, what what actu actually means the input uh, input uh, now the question is what do we understand by the capital goods because when we acquire capital goods we also pay tax and whatever tax we pay that we can take the benefit of that tax although there is the the it defined in a very simple way that uh, the in the in the uh, cg uh, in the um, uh, cgst act section 2 sub section 19 defines the capital goods is the value which is capitalized in the books of account of the company you may acquire some property if you capitalize it in your books of account in my humble view it becomes capital goods if you utilize if you, if you don't if for example if if a goods is not capitalized it remains input and as for the input service is concerned section 2 subsection 102 if i if i uh, say so service means anything which is not a goods is service or if i am told to say what what exactly do you mean by service service means to do something not to do something refrain from doing something tolerating something all these amounts to service and for any of doing for doing any of these things if somebody is paid some consideration then the gst is also payable on that also for example if somebody says to me that you write a book i write a book it is service which i am rendering to him i am entitled to that if somebody says a one i am i am practicing uh, lawyer if somebody says some person comes he says look i engage you i engage you that you will not appear for so and so so and so persons do i am not doing anything but he is only engaging me not to appear 
for these, these, these persons. Though I am not doing anything, nothing has been done. Even not doing something is also a service where the tax is payable. <coughs> Tolerating something is also subject matter of the service tax. For example, you have booked the air tickets, you have booked the hotels, in last minute is cancelled. The question is the certain amount which has gone to that travel agent or to the hotel people, is it liable to GST? The answer is yes. Because he is tolerating an act. Tolerating an act is also amount to rendering of service. So therefore, tax is payable on that also. <clears throat> Although today is not this um, uh, subject matter of uh, discussion on this, but just, uh, just by way of uh, explanation, uh, I am going to uh, place before you. <clears throat> now, the point here is for the purpose of uh, the um, taking the uh, benefit of ITC, what is the documentation which is required is? In the earlier regime, the invoice was probably the invoice was one of the document which was permissible. In earlier regime, the debit note and the credit note, this was not the document for the purpose of availing the ITC. In the GST regime, fortunately, the debit note is also a document on which the GST is on which you can take the, the you can take the credit. <coughs> Uh, this is this is a, I, I, I'll say this is the um, very good uh, uh, provision which has been made in the GST law, um, and uh, as I said, a person must be for the purpose of taking the credit. For example, if you are buying, if you are for example, if you are a manufacturer of say color television, and uh, you are buying the picture tube, which a tube is required for the manufacture of TV you are buying also the cabinet, various items are being bought. The point is at which point of time I can take the credit. Even when the goods have left the factory of manufacturer and on the way can I take the benefit of the ITC, the answer is no because I have to pay tax on the goods which I have manufactured. And in, in my credit, the, the amount, there is no amount. So, the goods which are en route, which have not come to my factory, can I take the benefit of ITC? The answer is no. Although, although I may have paid, I may have paid the purchase consideration for purchase of the picture tube. But so long as the picture tube has not received in my factory, I cannot take the benefit of the ITC on the picture tube. When the picture tubes are, has arrived at, has reached at my factory, only then I can take the ITC. And then obviously, I need not to be said that uh, the, uh, uh, the picture tube must be accompanied by the invoice. Because uh, the invoice is one of the fundamental document uh, which is required for the purpose of payment of the uh, for the purpose of pay, uh, for the purpose of taking the benefit of ITC. <coughs> the uh, uh, the third thing is that as required under section sixteen subsection two, the uh, the 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 the, uh, the, the seller uh, sorry the purchaser. The as per section section 16 subsection 2 of the CGST Act, this 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 buyer has a time of six months to make payment both or make payment under the invoice. This provision was not there in the central excise regime. The person or the buyer whether he has paid to the seller or not, the moment he has received the goods, moment he has received the duty paid goods in his factory, 
under the cover of invoices, he was entitled to take the credit. But in the is a is the most heartening thing in GST regime, the moment goods are received under the cover of invoice, you can take the provisional credit. And the provisional credit will get confirmed only when within the period of six months the purchaser makes a payment to the supplier and makes a payment of the entire value, not only of taxes, but the entire value of NYS has been paid by the purchaser to the seller. If for example, if for example, only part payment has been made by the purchaser, the question is what has to be done in that case? Because earlier the purchaser has taken the full credit. In that event, he has to reverse the proportional credit because he had made a part payment only and he has to reverse the ITC and has also required to pay interest and say after 3 months that is maybe 9 months, 10 months or maybe 1 year if he makes the payment then in that event he is that the buyer is entitled to have the recredit. He can take recredit once again but whatever interest he has paid to the department that for, inter, for, for which he cannot take the credit. He can take the credit of only ITC and if he has that since uh, he has paid interest also he is denied, he is denied the, the denied taking the credit of the interest which he has paid. And one more requirement is that um, he has, he, he should also furnish the return. If he, has, if he is not filing the return, probably he cannot take the credit. So, this is, why, this is also um, um, a, a very good provision which has been made in the GST uh, regime. <coughs> um, of course, uh, there is one provision that um, if the goods are being received in lot, that um, when the last lot is received, only then he is entitled for the, he is entitled to take the credit. It is very strange provision. I do not know what is the purpose of keeping this provision. If, uh, if there are goods have to come in 10 consignment, each consignment is covered in the invoice. Invoice has to come because goods cannot leave without invoice. So, when the invoice is there and the goods is coming to my factory, there is no point to stopping the purchaser from taking the credit. Why should wait for 2 months or 1 month or maybe 3 months when you see the last lot? Because each lot is accompanied by the taxable invoice. The moment taxable invoice come to my factory, I am entitled to take credit. Why should I wait for 3 months? At least I could not understand why the government has kept this provision that you must receive when the last lot is there. Because no lot, each lot of the goods has to accompany invoice only. Goods cannot come under the, under the bills or under the chalan. If they are the taxable goods, it has to come under the invoice only. <coughs> Yes, what are the documents uh, on which uh, the credit can be taken as I have already explained to you. Invoice issued by the supplier of goods or services. Then a debit note uh, which unfortunately was not there in the current regime. We have the debit note also. Bill of entry or a similar document prescribed under the, under the Customs Act. Revised invoice and in the current regime there is also a provision that any document to show payment of duty is also an eligible document. Unfortunately, that provision was, was not there in, uh, in previous regime. In previous regime, there are many instances or many situations where a person has acquired a duty free material under advanced licenses in the hope that those raw material will be used for the manufacture of 
goods which will be exported. I have purchased raw material without payment of duty. Now, sometime later on, my export contract is cancelled. And the raw material which I have purchased without payment of duty is now required for the manufacture of the goods on which duty is payable. Obviously, on raw material, I have to pay duty. That duty was paid earlier in TR6 Chalan. Unfortunately, though I am paying a duty under TR6 Chalan to the government, but department is own style and own ways of working. They say, you may have paid duty on TR6 Chalan, but TR6 Chalan is not a prescribed duty paying document and therefore, you will not be entitled to take the credit. In fact, in 2015, for the first time in the history of SESTAT, in the case of Cord Cables Limited, I myself have argued and persuaded the honorable member SESTAT. I said, Sir, kindly appreciate. I have paid the duty on TR6 Chalan. And whatever duty I have paid on TR6 Chalan, I am taking the credit. And whatever input I have purchased, that input has been used in the manufacture of finished goods. And finished goods has been cleared upon payment of duty. So, what loss has been caused to the revenue? I have not taken any extra. I have not taken uh, credit or sandwich on an item which is not permissible. Whatever input I have purchased, that input has been used in the manufacture of dutable product. Dutable product has been cleared upon payment of duty. So, what, why, the, why the government is not permitting me to take this sandwich credit on TR6 Chalan? It appealed to the honorable member and for the first time he said yes. There is no, although, although TR6 Chalan is not a duty, prescri duty is a prescribed duty paying document, yet for the first time in the history of uh, SESTED, the sandwich credit has been allowed. Fortunately, in the GST regime, uh, the, uh, the, the, the document, any other document which under which a tax has been paid is also a document of which benefit could be taken. It is a very good uh, piece of provision which has been kept in the GST regime. Now, let me go to the section 16 which deals with the, the ITC that is input test credit. Conditions uh, which I have already explained to you. Now, one more thing I, I, I must tell you, uh, the, what is the situation where supplier has not paid tax, because supplier paid tax next month, next month by 20th. If he has not paid the tax and the buyer the buyer has paid the full value to the seller. The question is, can the will the will the buyer will be denied of the benefit of ITC though he has paid the full value, but supplier or the manufacturer for whom the buyer has procured the goods, he has not paid the tax. In my view, in my view, the buyer cannot be denied the benefit of ITC. Though it is said, though it is said that uh, the supplier or it is the duty of the purchaser or recipient to ensure that the supplier has paid the tax. But in my humble view, in my thinking, 
most of the time it is practically impossible to find out as to whether the tax has actually been paid by the by the supplier or by the manufacturer. I, in fact, one of some of the learned uh, professionals have said that on the portal of uh, the GST, you can find out as to whether the tax has been tax tax has actually been paid by the manufacturer or by supplier or not. In fact, I have no um, I have not the benefit and uh, occasion of uh, uh, visiting that portal, so I am not I will not be able to really comment upon whether. I can I myself can visit can see whether the supplier has actually paid the tax or not. But the the onus is upon the uh, the buyer to ensure that the supplier has paid the tax only then he will be entitled to retain the benefit of ITC. Uh, one more thing, uh, the very damaging provision which has been made is uh, that is uh, uh, 69, 17, then uh, you know many times you must have seen that uh, in the earlier regime also, department uh, issues a show cause notice. Sometime there is a demand for a normal period that is one year and six months. Sometimes they raise a demand invoking the extended period of limitation that is five years. If I explain, say date of SCN is say 1118, they can go back backward up to one year and six months, they can demand the duty that is up to 1st of July 2016. And by invoking the extended period of limitation, they could have gone back for a period of 5 years. <clears throat> In the earlier regime, many times department issues a show cause notice invoking the extended period of limitation that is 5 years. They go back for a period of 5 years and they calculate the demand of 5 years and they issue a show cause notice seeking to raise a demand and ultimately sometime demand is also confirmed. Because revenue authorities up to commissioner level demand is more or less confirmed even if merit is there or no merit is there. But if demand has been confirmed and a tax has been paid by the party, he was entitled to take the credit of the tax paid. If assuming if he has bona fidely believed that something is not taxable and litigation starts. And after 10 years, ultimately settled by Supreme Court, no, this product was taxable. The result is I pay, I would have paid excise duty, I would have paid interest and penalty also. The normal law was whatever excise duty has been paid, I can take the benefit of the sandwich credit. Of course, whatever interest I paid, penalty, I can't take the, I can't take the credit of either interest or the penalty. But excise duty, whatever I have paid, I can take the, uh, the benefit of sandwich credit. Now, in this regime, in the GST regime, I do not know why the if duty is payable by the purchaser or by the SSC, when the department has, ex, has invoked the extended period of limitation and a demand has been confirmed. Why, why you want to deprive the SSC? Because they can always be divergent of views on various issues. I may feel, I mean, I may feel yes, uh, the act of the SSC was bona fide. Commissioner Bill may think otherwise. Trade Tribunal may think otherwise. High Court may think in a different terms. And many times we have seen the the the, the judgment delivered by the Commissioner Bill is set aside by the Tribunal. And the judgment delivered by the tribunal is set aside by the high court. 
and uh, many times the judgment delivered by the high court is set aside by the by the supreme court also and supreme court also many times feel that no the judgment which they have delivered 5 years back require reconsideration so there is always second thought a second view so if there is a second thought and second view then why the why the trade and industry should be penalized when the demand has been confirmed the party has the 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 party has made payment of gst of last 5 year why you want to deprive the benefit of itc there is no reason i think um, i don't know whether the trade industry has taken the taken up this issue with the government or not that i am not aware of but uh, this require in my most respectful and most respectful and humble submission required to be reconsidered if if i am paying tax naturally i am entitled to benefit of itc why you want to deprive me just because department in their wisdom uh, has invoked the period of 5 year because many i have seen many times department sleeps for months together in and years together and many times department wakes up only when the audit is done they they, they themselves come they see they don't find anything wrong but after 3 year or 4 year audit come they find no no these things the all these wrong credit has been taken then there is they issue show cause notice invoke extended period of 5 year confirm the demand and now under the uh, this this provision you can't uh, have the benefit of itc because department has used the word in the show cause notice fraud and invoke the extended period of limitation and demand has been confirmed solely due to the due to negligence attributable to the department we are a civilized country if the ssc has paid tax he should be entitled to why 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 you want to deprive him but he is already penalized he is penalized in terms of the interest government has claimed interest he is not taking the credit of interest he has paid penalty also of penalty is not taking the credit what credit he want to have only for the duty paid that's all to what extent you will pen- you want to penalize him you want to, to deny everything the duty the the tax the interest and penalty in my most respectful submission is a, is a highly unfair <clears throat> आधे घंटे बाद नाउ वी डील विद द द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट दिस टॉपिक ऑफ द सेक्शन 17 सब सेक्शन 5 द ब्लॉक क्रेडिट व्हेन वी टॉक ऑफ ब्लॉक क्रेडिट द फर्स्ट इज द फर्स्ट इज द Uh, the point is uh, or the issue is in respect of motor vehicle i don't know what is the purpose of denying the itc on motor vehicle the uh, the the cars the buses they are used for the legitimate business purposes if the cars are used for by the sales staff there is no reason why it should be denied of course uh, if the if the buses are used for the purpose of transportation of uh, the passenger and goods it is entitled uh, the benefit has been given but the purpose if the company is not engage if the company is engaged in the in the business of manufacture of goods or provision of services there is no reason why why the why the itc should be denied on motor vehicle well at time there there could be possibility of little bit of misuse but because there is a little bit possibility of misuse the entire credit on motor vehicle should be denied is is highly i'll say arbitrary highly arbitrary and then they, they, again the next question arises whether the repair and maintenance towards motor vehicle can the itc can be claimed or not 
In fact, in the earlier regime, there are a number of judgments where the tribunal has allowed, the honorable tribunal has allowed the benefit of the sandwich credit of the service tax paid on repair and maintenance of the motor vehicle. So, in my in my humble view, of course, the under the, under the section 16 and 17, uh, I have not seen a specific bar in taking the ITC, uh, taking the ITC of the GST paid on repair and maintenance of, of the motor vehicle. <coughs> The third and the second um, uh, the point is uh, the food and beverages. Again, I fail to understand why the benefit has been denied to the food and beverages. It is quite likely uh, in the uh, when there, there when there is a year ending, when there is a, some uh, target has to be met, the staff sits and they are provided uh, the uh, food and beverages. The food comes from the restaurant or from the hotels, or many times staff is taken to the uh, to the hotels, and they are given either the lunch or dinners and whatever it is, and uh, there is no reason why you deny the benefit of uh, this uh, food and beverages. There is that, there is absolutely no reason, but uh, I don't know why the government has denied the ITC on food and beverages. Then we have outdoor catering. Again, outdoor catering. There is no reason why it should be denied. Beauty treatment. For example, if the, the, the some there is a film production company, in film production, uh, all the actor and actresses, even the main actor or may, uh, even the side actor, uh, beauty treatment is required because the very nature of business is like this. So, beauty, the the ITC on beauty treatment is is not allowed, even to the film production company is something beyond the comprehension of any sane person. Health services again is uh, cosmetic and plastic surgery also. For example, again drama company, some film production company, some other company which are of uh, so in those cases it should be allowed, but I do not know why it has not been allowed. <coughs> Membership of the club one can understand that uh, it may be denied because most of the time it is misused. Health and fitness and it says rented cab is again rent a cab and uh, insurance and health insurance. There is absolutely no reason to deny the benefit of rent a cab. The cars are taken on rent on day to day use basis and uh, in fact, this provision has come with effect from 1-4-2011 in the service sex law also. But in 2016, the Honorable Tribunal, while dealing with amended provision, has consciously allowed the sandwich credit even on rent a cab. They say rent a cab is used for the business of the company. Though, they, though, though there is a bar, there is a specific bar. And yet, in the case of Reliance, the Honorable Tribunal has allowed. I think the Honorable Tribunal will also allow even under the GST regime when there is a specific bar. And but again, uh, 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 repeating at the cost of repetition, there is, there is no there is no logic, there is no valid logic to deny the benefit of uh, ITC on rent a cab, life insurance uh, and health insurance. Well, if the life insurance and health, uh, uh, there, there is not a complete bar as such on life insurance and health insurance. It is if the benefit of the life insurance and the health insurance is given by way of uh, some mandatory provision. If there is some labor law, some pro, if the labor law provide or even the laws, local laws of the state government directs the company to have the uh, uh, life insurance or the health insurance and then even whatever the tax has been paid, the company is entitled to take the benefit of ITC. 
travel benefit extended to the employees on uh, leave or home trip is one can understand that if an employee is going for uh, availing LTC once a year, twice, once, once in two years or he is going to his hometown, then naturally there is no reason because these are not in furtherance of a business. So, therefore, uh, if ITC has been paid, it should be denied because it is not for the purpose of business of the company. The one more thing is uh, very, very important is about the worst contract. Section 2, subsection 119. It says that the whatever tax has been paid for the services of a worse contract, you can take the ITC only when the services of worse contract are being are given. The only exception is that if there is an emergence of immoral property and the immoral property is in the nature of plant and machinery. It is a very again a strange provision. For example, I construct a huge mall and for constructing a huge mall at a cost of say rupee 200 crores, I have purchased cement, steel, tiles, so many things by payment of GST. Mall has been constructed, it has been let out on rent. Obviously, when the rent I am receiving, I am paying GST to the government on rent. When I am paying a GST to the government on rent which I am receiving, there is absolutely no reason why the government should deny me all the taxes which I have paid in construction of that mall. There is absolutely no reason. It is one of the most arbitrary provision which the government has kept it. Further, <coughs> Uh, it says that if by availing the worst contract service, if the plant and machinery emerges, then in that event ITC will be permissible. Let me let us discuss deliberate three four examples. Somebody wants to construct a hospital, 1000 bed hospital is being constructed. There has to be huge building, number of operation theatres, number of uh, laboratory to be installed, more than 1000 bed has to be installed. The question is the whatever tax has been paid for setting up the hospital, is credit should be denied when some of the activities of the hospital are taxable, though all may not be taxable, some are taxable. <coughs> the heard word is plant and machinery has been used. The section says if work contract service has been used for the purpose of setting up a plant and machinery, then ITC will be available. Now, again plant and machinery has not been defined in the GST law. GST law is silent about the plant. What is the meaning of plant is not defined. Now, we will have to go back uh, or uh, look to the how the Honorable Supreme Court and the High Court have defined the plant and machinery under the income tax law. Under the income tax law, the Honorable uh, Supreme Court and the High Court have said that for a hospital, even the building is a plant and machinery. Same is the case when 
a huge building is set up for the purpose of setting up a cold storage for setting up a cold storage we have a huge buildings some plant and machinery water treatment plant the question is that huge building in which the items are being kept is that building could be set to be plant and machinery yes there are a number of judgment which says that building is a plant and machinery when uh, uh, logistic services have been provided warehousing services have been provided and you set up very big uh, godowns very big warehouses question is what is the sense of denying the itc for the purpose of uh, itc on various inputs various input services and the capital goods which have been used for the purpose of setting up the warehouses and, and 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 obviously warehousing activity is subject to gst a party is paying a gst on the rent which he is receiving by letting the warehouses and the godowns even that has been denied on on, on the plea on the plea that the warehouse is a immovable property although the andhra pradesh high court uh, in the case of sai sahita has held that no whatever the uh, tax has been paid for the purpose of setting up the warehousing warehouses which have been let out and which service tax was payable the in the case of sai sahita honorable uh, andhra pradesh high court has held that the party is entitled to following the andhra pradesh high court in the case of sai sahita there are number of judgment of the honorable tribunal uh, where the honorable tribunal has held that in case of uh, the clubs in case of uh, cinema halls the honorable uh, tribunal has held that uh, if the building is ultimately let out on only service tax has been paid there is no reason why to deny the benefit of uh, the sanvit credit Uh, on the which has been um, which has accrued uh, to the benefit of the that party <clears throat> and in fact uh, in in one judgment uh, in one judgment uh, the honorable uh, high court has gone to the extent of saying that uh, even the runway runway of the airport is also a plant and machinery so therefore um, uh, one need not to be disheartened or feel dejected that uh, the word is plant and machinery plant and machine is a word of very wide connotation as i have said in respect of the building to a hospital building to a sto- building building to a cold storage building to a warehousing they are all plant and machinery so if it is a plant and machinery you are entitled to take the benefit of itc Uh, this is the what uh, number of judgment says <sighs> now let us uh, uh, d- d- deliberate some of the uh, topics uh, um, the uh, in relation to the uh, itc some of the issues uh, uh, arising out of uh, the itc now uh, for example the uh, um, the uh, a london uh, practicing company act uh, um, uh, wishes to set a new set up a new office and uh, or uh, new office and for that purpose he has taken the office on rent and he is paying the rent and he is paying the when he is paying the rent obviously he is paying the gst also the question is the um, whether the gst which is paid by him can he take the itc or not the answer is yes for day to for discharge of his functions he has acquired a vehicle say honda city car and obviously when he acquired a honda city car he must have paid gst also the question is 
can you take the ITC on uh, GST paid for purchase of Honda City car as per section 17? This is a block credit is not entitled to, but in my humble view, whatever the repair and maintenance charges are there and on which he has paid the GST, he can take the benefit of those things. The uh, question is, uh, uh, he may have paid uh, the GST on laptop, GST on computer, GST on photocopying machine, GST on AC. In my humble view, whatever GST has been paid on purchase of laptop, computer, photocopying machine, AC and uh, uh, tea coffee vending machines, uh, water cooler. In my humble view, uh, it is uh, the whatever tax has been paid, the benefit can be taken. Although, although department says um, food and beverages, but uh, in my humble view, that food and beverages should be restricted to the food uh, uh, which is brought from outside. If, for example, if somebody is preparing a tea within the office. And for preparing tea in the office, if you buy certain uh, duty paid items, in my view, in my personal view, the, you can take the benefit of the ITC. Now, uh, if uh, the a professional firm, uh, the firm of professionals, maybe a learned practicing company secretary, maybe learned chartered accountant, maybe advocate, they engage the services of uh, the various professionals. The question is, uh, whatever GST has been paid for taking the benefit for, for availing the services of those professionals, can I take the benefit of ITC of the GST paid? In my humble view, yes. When any taxable entity avail the services of the various professionals and the GST is paid, you are entitled to take the credit. Because the word is ultimately the in furtherance of the business. In furtherance of business word has not been really interpreted by the by any court so far. But if you look at the landmark judgment of the Honorable Bombay High Court in the case of ultra tax cement, where they have used the word in furtherance of a business or in relation to the business. There the Honorable the Honorable Bombay High Court has gone to the extent of the any activity directly or indirectly in relation to the business. And if service tax has been paid, the party, the assessee is entitled to take the credit of the service tax paid. So, we, we have to borrow the very same principle of ultra tax in the, in, the, in, the, in the present regime also. And for the purpose of running a business, any business, if any input services are availed or input is availed, then there is no reason that the ITC on the input or input services should be denied. In earlier regime, uh, when you acquire the capital goods, it was permitted 50 percent the, the in the year of uh, this year, 50 percent next year, but fortunately in the current regime there is no such division. The year, the year in which you acquire, the entire credit could be taken and uh, there is no 50 percent this year, no 50 percent next year. As I already have explained to you that uh, 
in case uh, the insurance has been taken in compliance of some mandatory requirement, then if a, if a tax has been paid, the, the party is entitled to take the benefit of the IT, uh, benefit of uh, the uh, GST paid on such insurance cover. Any questions now? Now, with this friend, uh, let me take up the questions uh, uh, which has been posed to us. The first question is whether vendor SEZ raises invoice on us for IGST paid on imported goods supplied to us, whether GST is applicable or reimbursement of invoice. GST is applicable on the reimbursement invoice. Now, for example, in case somebody is incurring the expense as an agent, then nothing, no tax is payable in that case. But if somebody is incurring expenses not as an agent, obviously, then the tax has to be paid, in my humble view. When the, credit, the second question is when the credit is availed, payment should be made within 180 days from the date of invoice. We have a situation where the purchaser released the goods from the port as high sea sale agreement after paying the custom duty plus IGST and BOE bill of entry was issued in the name of the purchaser. Since the import for a turnkey project awarded to the supplier and payment will be released on deferred basis, can the purchase uh, can the purchaser avail the entire credit without complying with? Well, you may have uh, your own uh, terms of contract, but uh, terms of contract cannot over cannot uh, overrule the provision of law that is 16.2. You have to comply with section 16.2. You can't uh, bypass uh, the uh, written law. I am into the retail trading of high and luxury high and uh, high and luxury goods. Our store oblique buckets are mainly uh, bouquet bouquet are mainly in Taj Hotel or high end luxury mall or so and so. We spend huge capex on our stores. Can we take ITC on construction of luxury store oblique bouquet? ITC on bouquet. Well, it is a very debatable issue as I have been always advocating that these have to be treated as a plant and machinery. So, therefore, in my humble view, following the judgment of the Honorable Andhra High Court in the case of Sai Sainta, ITC should be allowed. GST experts say it is not possible to take a spend to customer. What is your view? If it is possible, why? If it is possible, and why? What is the reasoning of denying it? Again, and why say there is no, there is no reason why it should be denied? I say it, why it should be denied? If it is, it is, it is, it is like a plant and machinery. And when in, in from bouquet or from a store, whatever I am selling, it is uh, and then tax is paid on that. You treat you treat as a plant and machinery. Following the number of judgment, in fact, if somebody visits my website PKMG, what is the name? In, your? Uh, in that, I have I have in this fact I have uh, I have inserted an article where in that I have dealt with extensively. Uh, in respect of the ITC on immovable property. So, I request the, uh, the landed uh, member, they can visit my website, they can assess that particular article which deals with uh, the ITC on immovable property on the analogy of plant and machinery. Whether we can avail input tax credit on CSR activity, yes, there is no reason why not. But sorry, what how the um, 
CSR activity, how the uh, uh, if you are engaging somebody Yes, definitely I think in my view is because uh, it is a legal obligation as, as we have in the case of health insurance or employee insurance on the same analogy, yes you can take the credit because again CSR activity is a mandatory in terms of Companies Act 2013. Question 5, if output tax liability for the month of 2018 was 10 and ITC for May 18 is 80 but I fail to find, file my 3B for May, then I become liable to pay tax along with interest on the next month due to now I am supposed to calculate interest on 100 on my net tax liability or uh, okay, okay. No, I, in my view it should be only the uh, interest should be on uh, 820, not whole. Can a unit in SEZ avail input tax credit or IGST paid on, on inward supply of goods and service received by them? SEZ avail input tax credit of IGST paid on inward supply of goods and service received by them. Obviously, if it is a SEZ unit, you can take the credit. In my view, yes, you can take, there is no bar. I, section 16 uh, of IGST Act, read by section 16 of CGS, I, I, I do not see any bar in that. Is IGST paid on service expense on companies on uh, IGST paid on service expense on companies on vehicle is allowed for 10 years? In my I already have explained any amount is spent on repair and maintenance of a vehicle. In earlier regime it was allowed, in current regime also it should be allowed. There is no, although is, uh, CGST Act is, is or a state uh, act is completely silent as for the as for the repair of plant and machine is concerned. But as I said, the similar provisions were there also in service tax law, where the service tax paid on repair of plant and repair of the vehicle was permitted. So the same by have the same analogy in this regime also, it will be allowable. So any any questions uh, which have come, I can further answer those questions also. So thank you so much for hearing me and uh, obviously bearing me as well. We will be failing in our duties if we will not propose a vote of thanks to the learned speaker of the day. We are highly grateful to Mr. P. K. Mittal for sparing his time, sharing his rich knowledge and experience on the topic. We are also thankful to all the members and students who are connected through Weblink. Thank you very much.